Welcome back to Our Issues Milwaukee. I'm your host Andrea Williams and we are here at the Milwaukee Public Museum in downtown Milwaukee where there's lots of excitement surrounding the many things going on here. Milwaukee Public Museum has been hosting a regular rotation of special exhibits since the early 90s and here to tell us about their newest exhibition, Alien Worlds and Androids, is Ellen Sinsky, Senior VP and Academic Dean, along with Bob Bonadour. He's a director of the Daniel Soroff National Geographic Dome Theater and Planetarium. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Wow, you have exciting jobs, that's for sure. Yeah. And talking about this new exhibit, this is uh, an opportunity for people that come here to blast off into a whole new world. And this is not your normal type of exhibit here. No, actually, we've been doing a lot of cultural exhibits, mm -hmm. but we're not only a cultural institution, we're also a natural history institution, and that means we do science here. And we have a planetarium too, so this was a great way for us to meld our planetarium with our sciences mm -hmm. and talk about, about science. So this exhibit actually explores life, the question, are we alone? Is there life <laughs> outside this planet? And that exhi the exhibit actually explores that by, um, by looking out into space, but then talking about how we actually um, look for life out there. What do we do on Earth that helps us to look for life out there? Mm -hmm. and the other part of this um, exhibit that is a great um, theme, I think, that will in in bring in a new audience, too, is that it uses science fiction. And it weaves the story of science fiction through the exhibit so that we all know that science fiction is inspired by, by science, but science fiction is also inspires scientists. Right. And so it's a great exhibit for teaching about STEM, you know, science, technology, engineering, and then math is also woven through all of those. So it's one of those exhibits that I think is going to be great for kids to learn about all of those things while exploring the outer space. Okay, and so this particular exhibit kicks off October 4th, mm -hmm. and it goes on how long? It goes till early January. Okay, I have here January 11th of 2015, yeah, so people have plenty of time to take advantage and uh, come back again if they right. enjoyed it so much. And so with the mm -hmm. planetarium, uh, she was just talking about how you're able to put the two together, sure. uh, this exhibit with the concept of what's out there in outer space. Were right. you excited when you heard about this particular exhibit? Oh, definitely, <laughs> definitely. It's, uh, Love the tie, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Well, yeah, we d created a show right here at the planetarium called Space Aliens Looking for Life in the Universe, and there is a scientific effort to look for life in space. It's mm -hmm. called astrobiology, and we look toward planets going around other stars, and we also look for possibilities by looking here on Earth in life called extremophiles, life that can live inside rocks, that can live at the bottom of the ocean with no light, no photosynthesis. And so we know that life can uh, exist in these very extreme places, so then we know possibly that gives life out there in space. Uh -huh. So it's a very scientific look uh, at this great topic, but we also have some fun with UFOs and aliens in the show. To yeah, so those kids who are totally into that, and adults for that sure. matter, because you've got a lot of uh, the Star Trek fans and all mm -hmm. of those mm -hmm. who would love to see something like this come together, and sure. it's finally happening. Uh, what made you go in this direction? Well, I think it was this the idea that we wanted to um, open our exhibits up to another segment of mm -hmm. the population. Um, we know that we have a large drawing that likes to come in for the cultural exhibits, but we wanted to have something for the kids that would really focus in on, on a fun way to um, explore sciences. And we also know that this exhibit does have a following of those people who are really into sci-fi because in the exhibit there are a number of aliens that so they are we've got C C3PO uh -huh. we've got um, um, Robbie the robot if you're going really far back <laughs> we've got the alien from from the movie aliens mm -hmm. we which is pretty freaky scary and <laughs> It, yeah, it's it's one that would scare me. Um, and then there's the RoboCop, and there are a couple of others in there that that um, and they're woven into the story. So they tell, they talk about. So for instance, with Robo RoboCop, 
um, the talk is about about um, cyborgs and when do we stop? When do we cease being human? Because we're we're being replaced with there. Are, there are um, people who are getting new electronic, um, you know, you're getting elbows and hip replacements, mm -hmm. but there are also people who are getting ear implants that help them to, ear, to hear and, and new sets of eyes that help them to see. And, and at what point, when we start adding all of these features to our bodies, do we cease being human and become more robots? Oh. So that's one of the topics that's explored. But each of these, the, the aliens, the aliens, um, alien from aliens, explores the aliens inside of us. Now, one fact that you may not know is that w that they're out of t every ten cells in your body, only one of them is human. Mm. All of the others are actually bacteria, viruses, and and um, fungi that are actually helping our bodies to to function properly. But good bacteria. Yeah. They're good bacteria. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So. But they use the aliens because, of course, that was one that came out of a, of a human, and uh -huh. so they use that as the pretext for talking about about the aliens inside of us. I love that, and I never really thought of it from that perspective. So uh, very interesting, and I feel like I'm learning so much in just this conversation. Uh, the Dome Theater and Planetarium here at the mm -hmm. museum, it offers a variety of visual experiences. So sure. you're equipped with um, new 3D projectors. Talk about the power of those. Well, those that really bring it alive, very immersive, and piggybacking on what uh, Ellen was talking about, we explore this life that lives inside us. Uh -huh. And you will see it in 3D pop out at you, oh. which is pretty cool. <laughs> uh, it may be a little unsettling, but it's kind of neat. So the 3D offers that type of experience, and that show is a little different from our space alien. That's mm -hmm. called Mysteries of the Unseen World, about all the stuff that is too small or too fast. Uh, or just plainly invisible for us to see. Mm -hmm. Wow, and the planetarium is Wisconsin's largest and most unique, so you have right. to be pretty proud of that. Oh yeah, very much. We offer a, a stargazing part of all of our planetarium sh shows where people can behold the starry sky and do some stargazing, find the Big Dipper, some planets. We do that as part of every show. Yeah, and I think that uh, a trip to the planetarium uh, is always one of those things that kids remember uh, for the duration of their life. I remember being in elementary school, going to the planetarium, and I'm sure things have changed tremendously, but <laughs> it's just like one of those things that you take something away with you for sure once you've visited mm -hmm. a planetarium. Well, and especially if you you know, when you live in the city, you really don't see the sky. You yeah. might see a few stars out there, but this is a way for you to come in and see what it really looks like when it's real dark out there. Yeah. yeah. So uh, you have your latest planetarium film, Space Aliens, which right. is produced by the museum. Mm -hmm. If you could tell us a little bit more about that. Well, the show starts off with this alien abduction uh, scene. <laughs> more for fun, to mm -hmm. get people thinking about, you know, are these true or not? And, you know, Basically, we don't have evidence for it. There's no scientific proof for anything like that alien visit, but we want to pose the question to the audience. So then we take a look at the practical uh, scientific investigations. We've found over 5,000 planets going around other stars, mm -hmm. and the projection is there are billions of planets just in our galaxy, which is one of billions of other galaxies, and many of these are Earth-like planets, we think, with water. So the argument, not evidence, the <laughs> argument that life is very plentiful out there and our Space Alien show uh, explores that. All right, so definitely something to look forward to. And I think that it's safe to say if someone in, is a fan of science fiction, like you said earlier, or the books, uh, things of that nature, this is an exhibit you have to see. And I'm just wondering, were you one of those kids that was totally into the out of space sci-fi things. Uh, sort of. I, I it started in high school, so okay, a little later. High but, school. But then it came, and 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 as soon as I got the bug, I was hooked. And yeah, I'm yeah. Fortunate to do well, it. Well, I before. knew somewhere in life you had to have uh, gotten that uh, type of interest to sure. be able to do something like this mm -hmm. and uh, have so much information right. to share with others. So mm -hmm. it's it's a pleasure talking to you both. Mm -hmm. And uh, one thing I do want to do is again remind everybody the. Aliens and Androids exhibit happens here. The dates again? 
October 4th it opens and we close on January 11th. All right, it's Alien Worlds and Androids. It's waiting for you and I want to thank both of you for stopping by and giving us information on that and of course there's so much more to talk about when we return to our Issues Milwaukee. We'll focus on the educational components that happen here at the Milwaukee Public Museum. We'll do that right after this. <laughs>